would stay out with my friends in the world as long as I possibly could, go home to my mom cursing, my dad sleeping in one room, she sleeping in the other. And it's just, you just feel that tension in the air. And when, when marriages break up, it's, it's devastating on kids. I guess we, we try to act like it isn't. I guess it affected me a lot more than I would like to admit. I didn't want anything to do with love. I didn't want anybody to show me any kind of affection or care because I already experienced that and you know, that broke. So I didn't want anything to do with that. First it started off with cigarettes. I said I would never smoke cigarettes and I started smoking cigarettes. Then from cigarettes, I started drinking and said I would never drink and it just went on and on. That's, that's the funny thing about sin and the devil. He, he makes you think that you can control the little sin that you do and but of course it always leads into bigger and bigger things. The main thing that really hit me recently is the death of my 19-year-old uh, cousin because this the youthfulness you think you're invulnerable and you got you have all the the time in the world to do whatever you want to you can party you can live this life of sin and you still make it home in time for dinner and god yeah. oh man i thought i was through crying about that <laughs> as well, you know, sit here and be a drunkard or an, a drug user because I keep trying to stop it, keep falling back into it, and he's saying, no, it's not what I have for you in life, there's a purpose for you, I'm calling you to much higher things, I'm calling you to be something, Bob told me, um, you know, that church that you would always see all the cars going to. Um, I want you to get up next Sunday and um, go. And uh, so I said, okay. And um, I got up that Sunday and I started walking. It was a pretty hot day. Huh? And I just started walking and um, I would see all these cars driving by and I would say, God, what do you want me to do at this church? And he would tell me, just keep putting in my heart my will, my will. God, what is your will? <laughs> I would walk and the cars would drive by. And the doubts, they're like, God, what do you want me to do? You, it's not too late for me to turn around right now. And if anybody gives me any kind of reason to doubt the belief that they don't want me here, then I'm not going to come back, God. But um, he just set people there to, uh, you know, erase any kind of excuse I had to not go. It's just everybody I met was truly genuine. I don't know if anybody else does this, but when I look in somebody's eye, I shake their hand and you say, welcome. I can tell if you're genuine or not. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, they made me feel like, I didn't know, I was welcome there. And he sat down, I sat down and he was preaching about marriage and I'm not married and I don't have any kids, but I took home something from that message that I could use in my life and I could correlate it with the Bible and I was, it's like, man, I guess God wants me to stay at this church, man. I still don't know what you want from me, Lord, but I'm at peace with being here and I'm seeking to do your will. So I'm going to follow you, no matter how scary that is, I'm going to follow you.